we have an exciting demonstration coming up right away. We have Sarah from Paws and Paws and Scout, her personal rescue dog. I wanted to say something about deaf dogs in general and dogs with disabilities. Don't write them off that they cannot be good pets. They can make excellent pets. Most deaf dogs, if they have no training, start off with some behavioral problems. Some of the problems include aggression, aggression to other dogs, not listening because people don't know they're deaf. They think that they're just stupid. They're not. And if you spend the time with the dog, they can make an excellent pet. They're a dog that shouldn't be off the leash very much unless it's an enclosed area because they cannot hear you if, they, if you call them. Sarah has done wonders with this dog and she did a demonstration for the SPCA at Bark at the Den this fall, last fall, and hopefully we'll be there again this year. So we're going to turn it over to uh, Scout and Sarah. Sarah's had this dog for a period of time and she's going to explain that to you. And uh, then I'll, like, I'll uh, commentate as to what she's doing. Okay, so I adopted Scout about a year and a half ago. She was um, in a pound for a while and the possum saw her daughter in. She was... Um, she wasn't uh, getting adopted. Nobody wanted to take on a deaf dog. She was a really good dog, very snuggly, very cuddly, but she had some issues. She had some dog aggression, which is common only if they haven't been socialized properly. And she was, um, she didn't listen. She pulled real hard on the leash. She didn't watch me. She just wanted to chase birds and lights and be a typical terrier, you know. So anyway, I decided to take her on, started training her. She took to it so fast. Once I started getting her to focus on me, everything just came naturally. She's a wonderful little dog, but everybody was writing her off just because she's deaf. Deafness in dogs is more common than you would think. There are a lot of deaf dogs due to breeding problems, um, often rural to rural kind of crossbreeding in any breed of dog will cause deafness. I took a deaf great dane down to Spokane to a rescue down there because none of the rescues up here wanted to take them on. So a lot of people don't adopt them. They get euthanized um, or just ignore. This one was dumped on the street. She was found wandering in Penhold. So they need some time. They need uh, people that will work with them, but they also make great pets. There's lots of people that don't do what I do, that just have them as a pet and they just do a wonderful job. I've decided that Scout's going to be my little demo dog. She's going to be my dog used to educate people on dis disabled dogs. They're blind dogs, deaf dogs, dogs with three legs, and people don't adopt them. They think it's a problem. It's not. So I'll show you a little bit about what Scout knows how to do and what she does. And she's just awesome. When someone's training a deaf dog, and if you have a dog that's deaf, like um, Sarah was saying, it's common with the color Merle, you see Merle coloring in collies and that sort of thing, and also in white dogs, white cats. Uh, so white sometimes carries the gene, not all the time, but in some breeds and some uh, types of dogs it does. So Sarah's had to learn another way to communicate with this dog, and dogs are very sight oriented. They watch dog body language and people body language more than they are able to understand oral communication. And as you notice, if you've been watching, this dog hasn't taken its eyes off Sarah for more than a second or two at any one time. Scout is waiting for any kind of direction. So you're going to see using kindness, treats, and a body language, in this case hand signals, how you can train a deaf dog or how a deaf dog can work for you. So Sarah's given the command for the dog to go into the heel position. And again, the dog is in the left side and walking in heel position and really watching Sarah. Now it's uh, pretty hard in here because there's a lot of distraction. There's all the smells of all the other dogs. So she has to really concentrate. So she's done a, a wait and now she's doing a down. And Sarah's going to the other end and she's going to call her. This is called a recall exercise, and in this case, a drop on recall exercise. So she gave her the signal to come, and then the signal to drop or lie down. There she gave a signal to back up. Maybe we'll do that one again. Back up in the heel position, and 
she's going to back up away from the owner now. There we go. <laughs> she's a little unsure of herself. There she goes. And now she's going to dance forward. Good girl. And you can see that this is a very lovable little dog. And deafness is not a problem. Just like as deaf hurt people, they're just as capable of love and affection as anybody else. Here she is doing some crawling. Crawling forward. Good girl. She's dropping down. And now she's going to do a rollover. So little Scout here probably knows more obedience than a lot of general pets do. She has 42 different hand signals or 42 signs that she understands for commands. 42. A lot of deaf uh, American Sign Language can be used and in a lot of cases people have to make up little bits of signing as well. I also have helped train a few dogs that are deaf and uh, if you're interested in adopting a dog with a handicap, please call Paws and Claws and they will put you in touch with anyone else who is going to help you do the training and Sarah is a wonderful resource in that area. So here's Scout again. Notice how she watches everything Sarah does because that's the only way she can communicate. Many times we hear about, oh there she's doing a little rub her eyes, there we go, yeah, very good. And now she's getting the bang, she's getting shot, bang, she's playing dead. And she's alive again, what a miracle. Again, any of these dogs, when they are impaired with sight or impaired with uh, audio problems, then there are ways that you can train them and work with them, and they make great dogs. And after all, dogs have helped humans for years. There are dogs that are the ears for some people. They let them know when the baby's crying. They let them know when... Uh, <laughs> They let them know when the phone is ringing or someone's at the door. Um, there are dogs that are seeing eye dogs or handy dogs that help everybody from cerebral palsy, Parkinson's, or any other disability. Here she is doing the dumb dog trick that you've probably seen before where Sarah's going to put a treat on the dog's nose. She's going to do it from another angle now so you can see it from the other side. There you go. She's going to put a treat on the dog's nose. There he is, he's got it. Great job, Scout. So let's hear it for Sarah and Scout. Congratulations for a job well done, Sarah. There we are, and Scout is happy. Wonderful. Okay, I'm just going to hand